All right, guys, so now we have some presents falling from uh, the top of the screen, and when Santa catches them, they go away. And you can see my code there. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it, and I'm gonna show you how we did it. First of all, we go back to our project. If you didn't see the project of how we get started with a snowball game that we're eventually gonna be done making, um, go ahead and click that, uh, that video wherever that appears and uh, you can get going on that. But down here at the bottom, I have a gift sprite. It doesn't matter. You can have anything you want falling from the sky, aliens, whatever. It doesn't matter. You click on that sprite, whatever it is. Now, the other thing I'm going to do here is over here on my left of my code, I'm going to zoom into my code here for just a second so you guys can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to leave it there. Um, you can see that I have it hidden. All right, I'm going to detach that for a second and let's see what happens. Okay, it's off screen. So um, what I'm doing, if I click on my sprite and I go to my costumes, there's two costumes. There's a red and a blue. I'm just making sure in my code that it's gift A, not B. And if I go back, you can see gift A right there. Gift B is right there. So I'm just specifying on what the red version because I'm going to do something different with the blue one later on, make higher value points. So I'm switching the costume, I'm hiding it, and then in my forever loop, just like I did for Santa, um, this time I'm gonna create a clone. So essentially I have the original present is somewhere on my screen there, but it's hidden so you don't see it. It's gonna clone itself every time, and then it's going to wait before the next one appears. Now if you wanna make your game harder, or easier, you play around with this number, or as you're gonna see much later on, we can have that change according to a variable so that your game gets progressively harder the longer you play or when certain events take place. Like every time one hits the ground, it speeds up or whatever. So that's the first part. This says when I start as a clone. I'm gonna show you that. So under events, we have when the flag is clicked and a bunch of these other things can start the program, a separate running line of script code. All right, so when, when I start as a clone, it's right here, all right? What do I want it to do? Well, I want the present to show up at the top and I want it to fall, right? So show up, go to a random position member. If you want to go back and check how I did this with Santa, pick a random position. I measured negative 230 to 230s anywhere along the top. In fact, I don't really like that. I think I'm going to change that. Um, I want it to be about negative 210 to 210. So it's not all the way at the edges. And then what's 186? Well, if I drag Santa here up to the top, okay, it switched back to Santa, but you can see it's 168 where he is, 180, uh, that's 185. 185 is the top. Um, let me put him back. Okay, cool, he's back where he belongs. So for the gift, 186 means one higher than, it's gonna start just off screen, but it's gonna be anywhere along the top, okay? So it's, it, shows up and it goes there bang now what we got to make it fall so forever loop means as long as the game's played what we're going to do is change y by minus three now you can play with this number two um which is how many how much it's going to drop each step each loop of this every time it computes it it's going to drop it by three you can mess with that number um that is the one that i kind of like but um later on we're going to mess with it but as it falls, I, thinking about this, um, my code here is gonna make a little bit more sense is what happens when the snow, when um, the present hits something like, let me show you what it looks like now. I took that code out. So the present hits Santa and nothing, it just goes behind him, right? And it piles up on the bottom, it just sits there. Well, that's kind of obnoxious, right? That's not what we want, unless we wanna make those obstacles that Santa has to jump over. So what we want is, as it falls, we want to put in this condition that if it touches the bottom, we want to act like it maybe disappeared, right? So it goes by. I don't know if you want that or not. Maybe you could have it blow up or whatever. So we're going to say that if the Y position is Santa's at minus 177. So this block of code right here, if the Y position is less than negative 170, in other words, it's below where Santa's standing, then delete it. Make it look like it's it's gone, okay? The next one is what's gonna happen when we get our snowball in there. And I'm gonna program that in now, because that's our next step. So if it's touching a snowball, 
then delete it. So when the snowballs hit it, it should delete the present. And then the last one, if it hits Santa, then um, delete it. So we're going to ignore the snowballs for right now. We're just going to say, hey, if it hits the bottom and if Santa catches it, delete it. So let's see what happens. Now I move Santa over. And as soon as it touches him, it deletes. Okay, but if you noticed when I played the game, I want that to make noise, right? Because it's just way more fun if it makes noise. So, so how do you do that? Well, you go up here to sounds, and how did I get a sound? You just click this and you search. So let me show you the ones like pop. Oops. That's a dying sound, right? Um, that's the bonk on the head. Magic spell. That's kind of cool. Maybe I'll use that if he's going to catch it. Um, or crunch. So that's the one. Crunch is the one I used when it hits the ground. And bonk is the one I used for when it hits Santa on the head. So let's go back to our code for a second and say, okay. So under sound, if it goes and hits the bottom of the screen, I want to start a sound. Okay, right there. And that is, I think it is crunch. Uh, so basically, I want to make it sound like the present is breaking or something. I don't know. So uh, what happens if then it hits Santa? I'm going to start a sound. Now, I'm going to tell you, I learned this the hard way. You don't want to play the sound because it will wait for that sound to finish playing before it moves on rather than starting and moving on. Um, and you'll see there's some lag there. So if it gets hit by a snowball, we want the... Which one is it? I'm not really sure. So we're going to go back and check that. Start sound. And when it hits Santa, that is bonk. So let me go back to my sounds real quick. Pop. Oops. Nope. That's the one. Magic spell. So we're going to go code, and then we're going to change this to magic spell. Like, hey, you got it, right? So that's it. That is now, if I hit... Okay, and I, so it's bonking him on the head. Okay, we'll let one hit the ground. And now we'll shoot one. Oh, that one bonked me. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm gonna pick one, because I don't have, okay, so cool. There we hit one, so now I'm gonna stop it. So the next thing is, how to get the snowball. That's the next video.